through what has been called the decisive decade for climate action, we at the McKinsey Global Institute wanted to take a pragmatic reality check of where are we on the energy transition today and what will it take to get the job done. So I want to leave you with, at the end of this presentation, three sets of numbers. 10%, 25 challenges, and 50-50. So hold on to those three sets of numbers. We'll talk more about them. Uh, so how did we approach this problem? Perhaps counterintuitively, instead of starting with emissions, we actually wanted to start with the realities of the energy system. Today's energy system is a massive and complex entity that has been optimized over centuries. So I'll give you a few examples of that. Oil and gas pipelines span two million kilometers to the Earth and the Moon and back twice. We have 60,000 power plants on the planet. That's massive, but remember the world is also under-energized. One billion electric vehicles on the road, and we produce seven billion tons, that's billion with a B, of industrial materials like steel, cement, plastics, and so on. So it's a massive and complex entity. It's also a highly performing one. Um, we have energy that is easy to transport, easy to ramp up and down, capable of high forms of heat, producing as much as 500 degrees Celsius of heat, which is important for industrial applications. And it's also what we wonkily call chemically flexible. By this, I mean energy resources are not just used for energy. They're actually used as an input into a whole range of industrial processes. So this is the system of today. Now, of course, it has flaws. And there's two critical flaws that we are especially trying to manage with this energy transition. The first flaw we all are well aware of is the fact that 85% of carbon dioxide emissions are associated with the energy system. This is the, the big impetus for the energy transition. But it's also a highly inefficient system. About 2 thirds of all energy is wasted. And so with that, this is why we're engaged in the hard task of the energy transition. So where are we on that today? In many ways, we've seen meaningful momentum. You all have heard the statistics about technology costs coming down, about massive deployment of solar, massive deployment of batteries, and that's all good news. But as the slide gives away, uh, despite meaningful momentum, the fact is that we're in very early stages of the transition. If you look at all the deployment that we need between now and 2050 for a whole range of low emissions technologies um, under a net zero pathway, to meet global commitments, we're only 10% of the way there. Let that sink in for a minute. We're only 10% of the way there, despite all the hard work that we've done, only 10% of the way there between now and 2050. And so the question we asked ourselves with that pragmatic reality check in mind is, what is it going to take to get the rest of the 90% of the job done? And to do that, we went back to what I started with at the very beginning, which is that what we're talking about with the energy system is a massive and complex physical entity that has high performance. And so at its core, what we're talking about with the energy transition, despite all the conversation about policy, despite all the conversation about finance and the trillions of dollars that we need, at its very core, at its heart, is a physical transformation. We need to build things, and we need to ensure that they work. And so with that lens, what we've done is what we believe to be the first comprehensive stock take of all the physical challenges that need to be addressed for the energy transition to succeed. So this is the 25 number that I referred to at the very beginning. It's an eye chart. I don't expect everybody to understand all, uh, or read every little bit on the chart. But suffice to say that what we've done with this work is across seven domains, power, mobility, industry, buildings, raw materials, hydrogen, carbon, and energy reduction, cataloged all the physical challenges, by which we mean the performance of low emissions technologies and challenges associated with that, or what it will take to build supply chains and infrastructure. We've cataloged all of them comprehensively. But we didn't just stop there. We said, OK, let's understand if this is the 25 things we need to solve between now and 2050, where do we stand on solving these things? And so to do that, we took each of the 25 and we categorized them into three different levels, which are the colors that you see on this slide. Uh, these levels indicate the degree of progress we've made on, the, on these challenges and how difficult it will be to overcome them. And what we found with that was that there were some things that were relatively easier to do. So things that we call level one, we found three level one challenges. These are areas where we've made a lot of progress. And at current course and speed, we actually think the challenge can be addressed. An example of that is if we think about the performance of heat pumps, number 17 on the very top right of this, this slide. Um, heat pumps actually perform very well in the cold. Um, 
current heat pump technology can meet the needs of 90 to 95% of households. Um, and so there's just that last 5 to 10% of performance improvement that we need to continue to get. So three level one challenges. We found 10 level two challenges. These are areas where we've made progress, we have relatively mature technologies, but there are still bottlenecks and constraints that need to be unlocked. An example of that, which you've likely heard a lot about, is number 19, unearthing critical minerals. The problem here is not that we don't have enough minerals on the planet. We need minerals like lithium or cobalt or rare earth metals for a whole variety of low emissions technologies like batteries or, or uh, wind. wind. Um, the challenge is not sufficiency of these resources. The challenge is the time that it takes to get capacity online, get extraction capacity online, and get refining capacity online. So this is a classic example of our level two sets of challenges where there are fundamental constraints and bottlenecks that we still need to unlock. But that brings me then to the level three challenges, of which we found 12, what we've called alliteratively the demanding dozen. These are the very hardest challenges. These are areas where we still need to make a lot of progress, um, and there's a long way to go. Now, why do we care about this demanding dozen? Well, the fact remains that a large portion of emissions relies on solving this demanding dozen set of challenges. About 40 to 60% of energy-related emissions are in level three challenges. These are areas where there are large performance gaps, where there are interdependencies to solve. It's not just one challenge, but it's challenges that need to be addressed together. And the transformation is just beginning. We're at very, very early stages. That 10% number I talked about is more like 1%. And so there is still a long way to go and no execution track record. And we find these level three challenges actually exist across sectors. We find it in the power sector, where scaling up things like solar and wind will actually require scaling up a whole range of flexibility solutions like batteries that are still nascent. They, those kinds of flexibility solutions to manage times when the sun doesn't shine, the wind doesn't blow, need to scale two to seven times as fast as power demand is expected to grow. We see it in mobility, where while batteries are great for passenger electric vehicles that drive short distances, they aren't as good for use cases like long haul trucking, where payloads are heavy and the distances that trucks need to drive is long. And what we find is that 20 to 45% of such use cases are not yet met with current battery technologies. And we see that in heavy industry, the classic hard to abate sectors, where decarbonizing a sector like cement would require sources of heat as high as 1,500 degrees Celsius. So these challenges exist across sectors. So what is this actually going to take? Well, you can look at that 40 to 60%, and I cheated a little bit at the beginning and I said 50-50. We can look at that and say, well, 50% are in hard things, but that means 50% are in the relatively easy level one and level two challenges. And to address that will take relentless execution to unlock those bottlenecks, those constraints that I described. To get to the level three challenges, though, those hardest challenges, we will need innovation not just with a small I, but innovation with a capital I. By that, I mean we don't just need innovation in individual technologies. We need to reconceive how we design the entire system to solve for some of the performance challenges, the technology gaps that we were describing. And then finally, all this will not happen. It sounds trite, but fundamentally, all this will not happen without collaboration across sectors. The energy transition is not rewiring, uh, is, is not replacing a light bulb. It's rewiring the entire house, and that will take collaboration from the public sector, the private sector, and the financial sector, as well as broader society. And so what do I want to close with? Uh, this is a quote that is often attributed to, to Einstein. We couldn't quite trace the source of the quote. But this is the spirit with which we've done this research. We've cataloged those 25 challenges, understood the physical realities of the, the energy transition, and what we will need to be unlocked to get to that 100% uh, that of deployment. You can see, I, I did a very quick tour of the research in, the, in this work, but what you can see, uh, if, you, if you're interested in more details, um, you can find additional details at, at this link. I think the, the message that I want to leave you all with is that understanding physical realities is critical. At its core, the energy transition is a physical transformation. And by understanding these physical realities, we can craft a more affordable, reliable, and competitive path to net zero. Thank you very much. <laughs>